What to do, YouTube? How you guys doing? My name is Paul, but you can call me Paul the Fifth. Fifth. Do you know what today is? That's right. It is Friday, November the 5th, and that calls for something incredibly special. Before we get into today's video, can you do me a favor? Hit that red subscribe button. It only takes that amount of time. Cool, thanks. I waited for you. Now that you're subscribed, let's get into today's video. Yesterday, I posted a video on the basics of Logic 10.7, and today we are diving into Apple Loops, and we're gonna be making some fire beats. If you're ready, let's go! National Fire Department. Thanks for coming to my rescue when I needed you about three years ago. Any first responders, much love to you. I appreciate all that you do. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make some fire beats within Logix loops. But first, is it okay to actually use these loops? Let's talk about it. My fellow musicians, artists, engineers, and super producers, it might be in your mind if you're working on a project and you're facing some writer's block, is it okay to use these loops within Logix? According to this Apple forum here, yes, it is okay to use these loops. They are copyright free. However, if they are used in another piece of music that might be out on mainstream radio, possibly somewhere on YouTube, you may face a copyright violation. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And you might recognize this drum beat. That's right, Rihanna and Jay-Z's umbrella found in a loop from Logic and it has gone crazy. It's been around the world and everybody knows it. So yes, you can use loops from Apple's Logic. Me, myself, I have done some orchestrations with those loops, fully from those loops, and that's what we're gonna do today. But first, let me show you somebody who is my inspiration. I like writing in D, and it's nice that if you go from... It's satisfying. Ladies and gentlemen, Hans Zimmer. He is a German composer. I'll probably never get to meet him in my lifetime, but I did get to see him at the Ascend Amphitheater in 2017. My friend Daniel that I was working with at the time had a spare ticket, he invited me to go. The Ascend is downtown on Korean Vets and First, and you are overlooking the downtown area. And if you're not familiar with any of his orchestrations, he's done all of the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack, he's done the Batman soundtrack, one of my favorites, Sherlock Holmes soundtrack, and the coolest thing ever, he was playing the theme song for Superman. The Batman building or the AT&T building was in the background. There was a nice breeze. Oh, bringing back that memory. I got cold chills just like I did then. It was an awesome experience and he has inspired me to write in D. Let's go ahead and create this logic section. A couple things that I want to mention before we start. If you haven't seen my Logic 10.7 Basics tutorial, just came out yesterday. You might want to pause this. Go check that out because it shows you some of the ins and outs of Logic. So that way, if you're new to Logic, you'll have more of an understanding of what we're doing today. The other thing is, for this part of the video, you might want to use headphones or pause, so that way you get the best overall audio experience. To pull up a Logic session, quick key command, shift command in, type in 16 audio tracks. This section here is our inspector. We'll hide that for now, make the session bigger. We'll come up to the corner and we'll click on these loops. We'll go to genre. Today, we're diving into the hip hop genre and we'll go to key. As Hans inspired me, we'll click on D minor. There we go. A quick word about myself. When I was in fifth grade, I started taking piano lessons. Did that for about two or three years. And then from fifth until seventh grade also, I played saxophone followed after my dad, Mike. And then in seventh grade, I had to get a retainer. So I started to learn to play drums and I've played it ever since. When I moved here to Nashville in 2015, I started taking bass lessons. I've always admired string instruments, so I wanna find some of these sounds and samples and put them all together. Let's see if we can do that. Before we start listening to samples and dragging things over, it's important to understand song structure. We'll hide our loops 
we'll push G on our keyboard. That pulls up global controls. The first thing we'll see up here is arrangement. If we click on that, we'll see intro. It gives us a verse, a chorus, a bridge, and then our outro. So we'll follow this template here. Let's go to our loops again, and let's see what we have. We have against time piano. Ooh, I like it. So we'll drag this on over, and then we'll use that as kind of the main theme. We'll hit Command R to repeat. What do we have here? Against time sax sample. Say that three times fast. Dope, I dig it. Reminds me of some old school Jerry Mulligan. We'll just kind of drag that right over here. Against time staccato strings. Powerful, authoritative. We'll put that like right in this section here, right in that build up before we get to measure nine. What else we got? I dig it. We'll just throw that like right up here. Cool. And right now I'm just listening to things and dragging them over, see what happens. Let's check out this next one, bit by bit synth bass. Oh yeah, I really like that rhythm. So we'll take that and drag that down to this area here. One thing I like to do when I'm creating a session like this, if I'm using loops or samples, is I try to build things from the ground up. This is like a sub bass, so I keep that down there. I have my drums and then guitars, then I'll have keys and then like strings up here and then I'll do vocals like right in the center of everything. What other sounds we got in here? Oh yeah, we're gonna put that like right up in here. What else we got? Yeah, I like that. That'll lead up to something, what else? Yeah, we'll use that for kind of like a little lead up here. What else we got? Pretty basic beat there. Let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, we'll use that as a little compliment here. we could use that to go with this little daylight guitar somehow or another oh yeah I don't know how we use that but we will Ooh, I like that. We'll put that down here and we'll use that. We'll take that and drag it up and that'll kind of complement the other piano. Let's go to instrument and type in symbol. There's this arcade dream symbol. It's a swell and I like to put that in. Usually if I'm doing a session like this, it kind of helps open things up a little bit. See? Okay, not sure how we're gonna use those, but we will. I like this music guitar. Definitely in this part here, that'll be a driving thing. More brass, okay, get punks. We'll put that like right up in here. I like that. 
Let's put that like right in here at measure nine. Okay, we might have to do some fooling around with some of these brass. Yes, okay. Let's see. Ooh, kind of dark and ominous. Let's put that in there. It may work, it may not. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, okay, I know I've got this bass in here somewhere already, but we'll figure it out. Let's listen to it from the beginning and see what we got. Alright, so we need a couple things. It's kind of basic and boring. In the beginning, we need some more to help build up. And then from like measure seven to nine, we need something to really let the listener know that we're building up into this thing. So real quick, let's push C. That will bring up this highlighted area. And that's for cycle or loop. We'll take this to seven to nine. Let's do some kind of a, let's look for a riser. Here's one in D minor. All right, we'll put that right here. And that'll go like right underneath our choir pad. And then I feel like we need to have some kind of drums coming in, like a bum, 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 type thing. So let's go to instruments and all drums and beats, and let's see what we can find. Let's see if I can find what I'm looking for here. Let's go to instrument and all drums. We'll look for some kind of fill here. Let's see if we can find what I'm looking for. I don't know, but that's pretty sick. We'll just drag that down there for now, and then we'll uh, see if that fits. Or we might build our own drums too. You know what? Let's use that. It's a uh, reflection snare number five. So uh, I think what we can do is somehow get that to work. Let's make this a little bigger for my old eyes. What we'll do is take this part here. I like this middle section. We'll just splice this together and drag that over. Let's see if this beat works. Cool, we gotta work on some levels here, but so far I'm liking this. For this section here, let's create our own beat. Let's go back to genre, hip hop, and then we go to the very beginning. And then we'll see in here different things like we'll have the hi-hats for this. Let's try this. We'll just do around the block hi-hat and we'll do something based on this. So we'll do our hi-hat first. We'll do our kick, or snare rather, and then our kick. I feel like we can do something a little more interesting with that kick. So let's take that and we'll just actually drag it another one underneath it and uh let's listen from the beginning i 
feel like we should add something right in this section, add a little more. I'm not digging that last part of the sax. Let's pull that down here. Yeah, see that's more smooth. Pull that line down a little bit. This part is going to be our highlight. Let's look for a fill real quick and then we'll wrap things up. So we'll go to instrument on drums. There's one. Okay, so we'll highlight those. We'll move them up there to that. And then we'll highlight this and put it up here. So what I want to do, I'm going to try to explain this as simply as I possibly can. We'll listen to this and I'll go through each instrument and do what I feel like needs to be done to get this to be a good mix. Here we go. I'm going to turn my volume down a little bit because it's like 3 a.m. and I don't want to bother my neighbors. Let's address this. There's some really uh, sharp, there's some just really sharp frequencies that are like piercing the ears yeah right here you can see those so let's do uh, let's do a little notch filter we can not only can you see that that's up there but you can do something called sweeping right there your house is uh so what we'll do is we'll pull that up and then we'll pull it down then we notch it. So we make it a narrow cut. There's something like right here about a hundred. And then we'll do like a little one right here. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing is right here on the verse part of it, that kick drum is really not coming in. So let's do this. Let's go to uh, this section here. We'll highlight the snare and hi-hat and pull those down so that we'll get the kick to come through and turn that off. Here's the other thing I want to do. We'll highlight those. X to go there and mix the screen. And wow, we're really clipping. We'll address all that. Let's go to our EQ. All right, let's take this. So essentially what we're doing is we can see that this low area is where the frequencies are. So we're going to take all the highs, cut them out. So we only hear that low frequency. Might do a little boost right here. And to make things quick, we'll take this, we'll hit option and drag. We'll address this here in a minute. All right, snare needs to come out, needs to go pop. Quick EQ. Here's the fundamental. We'll roll that off, pull it down here, notch it, and then use your round. Being difficult, there we go. Cool. You can 
beginning. Couple things we can do to address the clipping on the stereo. If we go here, we'll add a stereo EQ and we'll roll some of this low end off. And when you do things on the master fader, you wanna make it real small movements, bigger everywhere else. So after our EQ, we'll do this. We'll add a multipressor and then we'll add a limiter so it doesn't peak out anymore. So we're gonna bring the volume up, but then we're gonna limit it. So we'll go here to multipressor stereo and then we'll just choose a default setting. We'll go to final hip hop compressor. So it brings up these lows, a little bit of the low mids, some mid highs and a little bit of the highs, but it's gonna do some good stuff. And then we'll go to limiter and on this, we'll take this down to negative three. So that's our output level. So once we get to negative three right here, signal's not passing that, it's gonna stop. And then we'll take this gain down about one dB. X, C, beginning. That's how I make a beat within Apple Logic using loops. Let me share a quick story with you. When I was a student at the recording workshop in Chillicothe, Ohio, we had five students on a team. Our instructor gave us an assignment. He said, I'm gonna give you a blank canvas and I want each student to put five things on it. It's gonna have a sun, a bird, a barn, a field, and a lake. He said, Paul, you might have the sun rising. The lake might be up front, the barn might be in the back, and the bird might be flying over. He says, student number two, you might have the lake back here. You might have the barn up front. The sun could be setting. The bird could be sipping water from the lake. Student number three, where the sun is just coming up over the lake. You have the sun rippling on the lake. The bird might actually be dead. And you have your field over here. See where I'm going? Basically, you have a blank canvas and you can use all these tools to create something out of nothing. So just get in there, experiment, and have fun. You can't really mess anything up. Command S. Saves, command Z, undo, shift, command Z, undo your undo. That's all you gotta learn. All right, thank you so much for watching. I really, truly appreciate you. Like I said in the beginning, if you haven't subscribed, take a couple seconds, just go ahead and do that. Like, comment, all that great stuff. Thank you so much. My name is Paul, the fifth fifth. I will see you in the next one.